This video is a complete disassembly and reassembly sequence video on how to take a Winchester Model 40 down and put it back together again. So if you're one of the other 12 guys in this country that owns one of these things, follow us and we'll show you what we're doing. Down a rabbit hole. Open the bolt, check the chamber, and check the back end of the magazine tube, clear. We need the hammer cock for the future to take the fire control group out the back, so do not drop the hammer. You can leave the bolt forward at this time. If the cap proves a little recalcitrant, just put a leather thong around it, and you can use a pair of channel locks through the leather in order to just sort of milk the cap off. Um, unlike the last couple of people that took this gun apart and really, really, really mauled it up. You always want to use leather. Rubber doesn't really work. Nothing else works. Quite like a little bit of leather. Your magazine cap's off. Insert a rod down the inside of the magazine cap. That keeps the magazine spring from going everywhere. And the magazine cap can just be prized out gently. That holds the mag spring in and that keeps this thing from going all over the place. So we remove the rod and now we have the, uh, the spring, its retainer and the cap. The bolt and the barrel are locked together at this point. So you need to pop the bolt open ever so slightly. And you may have to push it back in order to do that. And that will allow the um, barrel shroud where the top of the bolt locks in right here in this, in this uh, aperture here to unlock and allow you to take the barrel and the forend off. Try to keep the forend of all semi-automatic guns like in a place where they're not over the floor because they have a bad tendency to crack down here, so just leave that alone. We'll remove the friction ring and the brake. Take the spring off, rip your towel, and keep on going. Okay. here okay there's a bridge across the actual stock bolt hole that has to be removed as we can see here this stock has been previously damaged because the grain on the butts running this way and it should be running that way and the stress induced by this screw probably popped it never tighten any screw that's down here very tight you might put the put the whole shebang in peril and this should just pop up and that's made out of wood and it's just a bridge that comes across the stock bolt is down in that hole okay and all we're going to do is take it loose wow Don't want to take it all the way out because we don't want to run the risk of dropping the, re the receiver on the ground. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to pop this up, roll that up vertical like that, and bring this around this way and finish taking the stock bolt out. Be very careful you're actually turning the screw here. There is a peril when you're pulling a stock bolt screw out. You'll have the hole and you get the screwdriver up along the side of the screw like this. And if you turn it hard enough and the stock is thin enough, you'll blow the side out of the stock. Okay. That causes the entire rear end of the gun to just slide off and the stock bolt was threading into the back end of that plug right there. So we're going to take the lock and screw out of here. All right. Remove the locking screw out of the way. 
and then we're going to come in and this shouldn't now in all fairness we've had this gun apart twice and it's clean and it's not fighting us the first time we took this gun apart it took us a full four hours to figure out how to take it apart in the right order and it took us another four hours to figure out how to put it back together again in the right order so you get to learn from our pain when this is all done this entire fire control group should just lift right out of the top so there we have the hammer mainspring and other things we'll talk about this in a minute this is a fairly simple and straightforward sub assembly until you get to the trigger we'll get back to that we've come all this way and we still haven't taken the bolt out of this gun yet you can't get it out the bolt is the last thing to come out and the first thing to go in and that seems to be what's kicking everybody including my butt so we got to comb everything else out of the way and this shell lifter has to go first you know and, and there's a couple things i want to acquaint you with here there is a small projection right here that's sticking up underneath the receiver wall and it bears up on the inside of this recess right here let me get that rolled around and get this cross lit so you can really there it is there's a recess in there and the, the shell lifter comes up against the inside of that to take this thing out we're going to have to flex we're going to flex this side of the shell latch or shell lifter in bring it up over the top of the receiver and stand it straight up and then that's when all the magic starts so the best way i figured out how to take this out is with a thin but incredibly resilient knife okay and this knife's got a lot of bend to it a lot of flex and we're going to need that because we're going to want to get in between here all right and there's a spot right in there where that knife will sit and it's putting a lot of flex on that and then you take a screwdriver and you pivot up so I'm pushing the handle down we're, we're uh, uh, pivoting here that's where our fulcrum is and we're lifting up and as we lift up that will pop around the corner and as that pops around the corner it lifts the shell latch free it's the best way I can figure out how to do it okay there's a screw right there and we're gonna lift that out. Now, when we went after this screw, this whole gun spent about two days in penetrating oil because when we got it, it was gacked up solid. Um, I'm surprised someone in the past hadn't just cut the cuts off this thing and weighed it down, weighed it, and sold it for scrap, but they didn't. There's a coil spring up inside here that has no recess, it's just sitting there. So when we pull this off, now we have all that grease we have all that grease on this spring to glue it into this part here that that this isn't just latent dirt that's actually assembly grease okay so that's out and the screw that held that in is also out it's this pin right here and it has a threaded head i'm gonna get that right against something silver there there's a threaded head right there so that goes in this way okay the other side now it gets a little tricky let me see if I got this latch. There it is. We have to get this shell latch out. And it's being shoved back into a semicircular mortise here. But it should come out to the front. But it's really not possible to bring it out without taking its spring out first. So the spring rolls up. And right there, there's the spring. It rolls up and then it's sticking down in a hole in here. Then it rolls up, comes around, and it's laying up inside of a hollow a mortise right here. So to take this out, there's a slight dipsy doodle in that spring that lets you get behind it here. And I'm trying to do this so you can see it and not launching it all over the place. You see how the spring popped up? Now all the springs in this gun are thick and really high rate. So respect the amount of energy that's stored in this little pig, but you can see the tail that sticks down. And then that's the part that hooks up inside right now. I got it in the shadow, but you see what I mean? Having taken the spring out, this is a matter of you got to do a little bit of a flex here. This will just flex around the corner and come right on out. All right. So let me grab a pair of players and fish that out and we'll move on to something else. So... What you're fighting there in this part is a that lip is up inside of a machined recess that's behind here. 
So what you have to do in order to get it out, it's so tight, you just gotta give it a little bit of a flex and it'll pop out. Okay, so now we've gotten most of the stuff out of the way and now we come to the fun part, which is this piece right here. And it is retained, let me see if I can show you that button. There's a plunger right here. That plunger will push down, that piece will fall out and will allow us to take the bolt handle out after we do something else, yes. So, uh, let me roll up here, let me get the light right so we can see what the hell is going on. Oh, there we go. Just put up with that little bit of fringe because I need it lit like this. So we're gonna push in on that plunger right there. We're gonna push in on that and pop this up and then allow the pin to go under it. By allowing the pin to go under it, it will pop all the way up, we'll take it out and it just pops right out. I know that's easier said than done, but here we go. Okay. You have to lift this free and it kind of has to rotate out. So it comes out, when we put it in, this lip right here is going to sit up underneath this undercut in here and it will go in and roll down. And then when it rolls down, this hole right here will have a plunger popping through it like that. Now, the thing you got to watch when you do all this is, is that, let's see it. There is a plunger right there that's uncaptured. And pew, this thing will take off on you. So, you know, we're good now because the tension's off of it. But we got to remember that that plunger's in there when we take the bolt out. So that leaves the bolt. We are finally at the point where we get the bolt head off this thing. There is a locking cover here. And the locking cover, there's a plunger in there. And I'm actually going to reposition this ever so slightly so we get it more in the middle. There's a detent in there. And you have to push down on that detent and then pivot this out of the way. So this has to come up. If you don't get it, you'll know because it's got to come up a long way. So hang on a minute here. This is like a door. There it goes. So you see there's a significant amount of distance there. And then we should be able to just lift this free. There it goes. And it's free and there we go we got the bolt handle out so a couple of things to note here from the previous step this groove right here when this part is in the right way when it's in this way this bolt handle will be in and that's going to ride in that groove and it's going to retain this part and this part are mutually retained so it's a pair of chinese fingers we've done all of that and now for the moment of truth. What? The bolt actually comes out of this thing? No way. Here, let me get a little bit more room here. And there it goes. And the bolt, I mean, the engineering on this thing is insane. The amount of cuts, it's beautifully made. But, but you know, just holy cow was it engineered out the wazoo. Now we're down to this shell latch. Not a shell latch, this is the bolt catch. And if you pry up on it from the inside, you can get it to ride out of the mortise like that. Now, that spring has got a lot of rate to it. So you'll notice that I have swept the floors of the shop before we started. Because if you drop it in a pile of sawdust, you're on your own. Let's take a look at what we got here. There is a hole there that the tail of the spring goes in. So hang on here. That tail goes in the hole right there. And then eventually the other tail is going to lay in this groove right here. We go put the thing back together again. We'll tension it all up and I'll show you how to do that. This thing pushes down. So there's a vertical cut that goes down and slides forward. So when it's down, see it slid forward in the receiver, right? And then there is a cut that allows this to rotate and another cut. Remember that tit we had to bend in in order to get it apart? Well, they put a cut in a receiver where that just drops through. So there we have it, a stripped Model 40 receiver all the way down to zero. 
All right, as you can tell, somebody tried to unthread this magazine tube and I'm not gonna go there. I don't understand what they were doing, what they were hoping to achieve, what their objectives are, what their goals were in life, what the name of their third kid was. I don't know, don't do that if you don't have to. There is a small aperture right there and you push up like this, push that together and then that trapezoid comes through. So once you get this all the way up and clear, you push in on the firing pin to remove the tension. And this semicircle right here not only pivots, but it also captures the firing pin right there like that. So you have to come all the way up, unload that weight, slide this out, and then the firing pin pops back. While we got this apart, we can take a look at how that works. That went into this recess right here like that and then rolls in and then that spring-loaded plunger popped up. So that's what we were doing before, but now you can actually see it out here in the world. And of course, there's a spring down inside that hole, so don't forget about that spring. There's a spring down inside this hole here. We're just gonna leave that alone because it's not necessary to go that far right here. There is a detent plunger pushing down on the safety, okay? And that detent plunger has a spring tunnel up above it. And whenever you go to screw this recoil tube into this body, you can push through this hole here. There's a hole. You push down on the detent plunger, wind this thing in until the tube creeps up to, to its predetermined spot. And then you stick this pin through. Let me get that right there. You stick that pin through, and that not only captures the tube, but the tube is capturing the spring, which is capturing the detent, which is holding the safety in, which you had to remember to put there. This particular pin right here is holding part of the disconnector assembly that's up inside the body of this beast. Okay, so let me get you over here. There we go. There's actually a... There's actually part of the disconnector here, which is actuated by the plunger as it moves in and out. And then when the disconnector activates, you can see that it would, hang on a minute, let me turn the safety off. It pushes up on that plunger right there. And when that's up, that pops back and allows the hammer to recock before you release it. I really don't want to take this all the way apart because it's just a real pain in the butt. But there is one more thing I want to show you here. Uh, we didn't lock this vise down when we changed camera angles. All right. The mainspring, and how do you take the mainspring out of this? Okay. And the way I would tell you is this plate right here, this plate is held and there's like a finger sticking out right there, all right? So the way I figured out how to do this is to partially cock it and grab it with a pair of pliers. So if you partially cock this and grab this with a pair of pliers, well, I gotta get, figure out where to get my hands here. Hold on a minute. Let me come in from behind it. If you partially cock it and grab it with a pair of pliers, it will bring that plate off for you and bang, you got the mainspring out of it. That's the only trick you gotta know. To get it back on, you can pretty much just do it with your bare hands. It's not that meaty of a spring. You can just grab it here, stick that on, do that, and set that down in there like that, and it'll just pop in, and then you can manipulate it until you get it to go where you want it, and bang, it's back together again. The spring inside the mag tube is held in by this threaded piece, and the stock bolt, of course, threads back down into, into the back end of that. So that's how this thing works, right? So to take it apart, you would have to release this and pull the spring out the back. Then you gotta remember that the detent plunger is held in by it. You can rotate this out and realize it'll explode after you drive this pin out. This pin locks the tube. The tube locks the detent plunger that particular pin right there holds in the disconnector this pin is a trigger pivot pin and that plate comes forward in order to let it off and the rest of this is just a normal gun other than that as normal as it's going to get yay wasn't that fun
All right, let's put this pig back together again. Remember to put the shell lifter in before you get on with this. Um, slide this through here. Get that to come up that way so that it can come into its recess. So that's where the, the lifter is going to be. You got to have this in before you start all this stuff with the bolt or you will get trapped. I'm trying to do here is make sure that the part that has the down right now these are backwards so this has to come over the top of the other spring and it's going to take two screwdrivers to do it I got to lift this up and then I have to pry this over on the other side and let that fall in okay so the tail is sitting in the groove here and the uh, and the part that runs down is sitting down into the hole. And that actually looks right and feels right. And you got to put the shell lifter in before you put this in. Bruno's standing over there vehemently gesticulating at me because this burned him because it took him like three hours to figure out how to put the spring in. Then you take it right back out because he didn't put the shell latch in. This is that detent plunger. It's just easier to put that plunger in right now while I got it rolled up. Don't forget about it. Roll the gun over and then it's on the deck somewhere. And well, So push in on that and snap that back up out of the way. And then there's a cam track in here that that trapezoid has to drop into. So you might have to do a little bit of wiggling around here to make that fit. I think, hang on a minute. You gotta get down inside there. There it goes. So the trick there appears to be push the tail of this down and then that will drop in. And then Bruno retrieved this, uh, this punch there and bang, that pops down and now this is locked up. And then we'll carefully roll up so that we don't lose that plunger. Okay, and now that puts us in this part we've already talked about this part ad infinitum ad nauseum i'm coming in at an angle i'm kind of diving in backwards like this come through there stick that part up underneath the tongue slide this down it comes through that and i gotta reach in front of you guys i'm sorry i'm pushing down on it while i'm pushing this plunger in and that's got to go in and then the, you have to get the screwdriver out from behind it so where are we there okay i had to slide the bolt forward a little bit to allow it it's trying to go through a mortise that's milled vertically and it's coming through at an angle like this so i had to run the bolt forward a little bit and i was able to get that to come in and snap home 
I prefer to put this one in first only because I have more room to maneuver with this honk and spring. Tip that in. Here, hang on a minute. That tips in this way, rolls down, bang, and it sits down, right? And then there is a hole in the spring that that divot pivots in. And then the rest of this, you can either do it with your fingers or a screwdriver and just shove it down. Hang on. There it is. Bang. Went around the corner. So all I did was pushed on that and it snapped up underneath. All right. So that's there. You take a little dollop of grease. You put a little dollop of grease in that hole so that that spring will sit in that hole and it won't take off on you. So with that dollop of grease there, I can turn this over and that spring doesn't fall out. That helps. You just got to make sure you put a gun appropriate grease in it. So we're going to just pin that up against the receiver wall like that with my finger. Okay. Screw in there like that. Now, don't beat on this thing. That screw has pivoted like that. You've got to make sure that you push the bottom of it over, just like on an A5. You've got to shove that over so that that will then engage the bottom. And then this is just free to move left and right. Okay. There's a, you can see the bottom of it right there. There's a vertical cut that this comes up into. It slides up and then this will come forward, right? And then putting this back together again, you can damn near do it with your fingers. I think we're gonna have to use that knife to come around it again. And just sort of, you're just gonna flex it while you're pushing down with this finger Flex the nose of that over and bang, and that that pops in, right? So now we've got that all in, and then we can put the fire control group back on the bottom of this thing. Make sure the hammer is cocked. Hammer's got to be cocked because it has to go over the top of this bar right here. This has to be sticking through the middle. This will engage, that will engage, and hopefully we will be good to go. Okay, so make sure that that picks up that tube. There we go. Boom, that's together. Roll. There's some tension on it. Put the big screw in. This is the wrong size screwdriver, but it's working because it's not fighting me. That's tight, but the locking lobe doesn't quite line up. So we would come back until the lock and lobe lines up, just like on a Mauser. It's a pretty good chance if you're taking this gun apart, you've probably had a couple of Mausers apart in your life. Put in this locking screw. Again, you don't have to gorilla these things, just get them snug, all right? Now, bolts closed. Um, and we've got to get the barrel and everything in it. I find it easier to work this without the barrel on it. I find it easier to grab it by the magazine tube, put the rear end back on a gun, and from here it's pretty conventional. Again, remember to not let the screwdriver get outboard of the screw head and blow the side of your stock out. Now, Model 40s had a problem with the stocks cracking if this ever got loose. So this goes tight and then give it a honk. The wooden block here, um, the wooden block was up in here like this. Are you there? Yeah. I was just having Bruno check the focus on this thing because I'm all over the place. And it's hard when you got a, when you got a depth of field that's like two inches thick. It's hard to stay in and out of this. So we try to use a lot of light in here, stop the camera down a little bit. And uh, that, uh, that gives us a little bit more depth of field, but you know, it's like making a five MOA gun, a three MOA gun, but you're a 40 MOA shooter. That's nice. You just miss in smaller patterns. Now we drop on the butt plate, minimize the amount of time that you spend with the butt plate off of the gun. This butt plate does a very valuable job of preventing splinters from being blown off the bottom. And every minute a gun spends on your bench, brand new gunsmiths, every minute a gun's on a bench without something protecting 
the butt of this is a, is a minute of risk that you don't need to endure. These plastic butt plates, you don't have to kill them. Just walk them up till they're like tight. And we put the magazine spring in, just grab a rod. I did this uh, when we did Bruno's Model 8. Take a rod and you impale the spring, okay? Just impale it. So now with, with very high D to D ratio of springs, there's a point above which at about 10 where a spring has to be guided or else it's not, you can't crush it by itself. Um, we have the follower and we ran a mop down the tube here so that we're there. You stick the rod in, stick that down and then check to make sure that this thing's free to move and is actually spring loaded. Okay, now we gotta find on the bench where I put the little gizzy that uh, holds the uh, spring in and you just slide it down. So now all this is under control and it doesn't explode all over the place on you here. Shove that in. It's just like, this is the Winchester version of Remington's little black gizmo that stuffs in there, no, nothing big. Now you pull this out, give the, make sure that that thing is free to move. And you're there now I've done several PSAs on how this works this thing here is a friction brake there's excess en recoil energy available and we've got to turn the excess energy that we don't need into heat and the way we're gonna do that is is we're gonna crush this bronze ring you see how I can make that gap get smaller with my hands so if we put this in here and we push down on it that will get smaller if I push it gets smaller, you see? So we put that end up against the spring. This goes down on the tube that has a little bit of light lithium grease on it. You gotta grease the tube, it's counterintuitive, but if you don't, this thing will gall and smear the tube, and we don't wanna do that. All right, I went and retrieved the four end wood. And you can see it's been blown out. There's a blowout in it, right? Let me silhouette it up, there it is, you see? So it comes around and then this piece of end grain right here is totally missing. That happens on a lot of these guns. And what they try to do is they try to take a cross grain piece and put it in here. See that cross grain piece? It helps until the glue dries out or you don't get this thing on tight enough and it walks itself out. So you can see that chunk that's missing there. This is every four end of a semi-automatic gun in the world. Okay. Probably the best muzzle brake ever made. Is it loud? Yes. Um, is it hard on people standing next to you? Yes. But boy, you want to talk about a patterning machine. I love cuts compensators. All you uh, collector guys, you can be all uptight about it being a 50% deduct, but I don't care. Okay, at this point, I got to take it out because we need to bring the bolt back a little bit so that this can fit up in there and then the back can lock in we can hold that up and i'm starting the magazine cap but i know i'm off camera but i'm also committed so i got to finish this here okay i got a couple of turns on it mag cap we can bring that in now all right there we go this particular mag cap had a difficulty there's like some strip threads up in here they're acme threads they're square but once you get past a point, they take off running again, and then they're real easy. But I'm right at the point now where I gotta go back to my leather thong because this thing is on tight enough. I don't have the grip strength right now to do it. So again, with the leather, you slide the leather back, and then it's gonna get to a spot where it's just gonna start running easy. There it is. There it goes. That's this particular gun we looked up in there. I love you, man, but I'm not cutting acne threads for you. I don't care how sexy you are. It's a Winchester gun. We're going to see if we can make it work with this Winchester ammo. For the record, I, I, I saw this much when I walked in the gun store, and I saw Cut's Compensator, and I didn't check what it was. Yeah? So. Well, I don't know. Let's see what we can come up with here. I've never even tried loading this thing, so I don't know. That went in. Sure. Okay, that one. Second one. They're going in. Oh, okay. I was doing it stupid. That's why. Okay. Again, I'll tell you guys with older guns, don't assume that the manual arms is correct.
Okay. I'm gonna come around the other side of uh, Bruno here because I want to see if we can get the. Uh... Yeah. Ah, one went in the chamber. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's find out. In there anywhere? Right in the ground down there. Okay. Well, it ejected. ejected. Damn. Like it worked. Hoorah. Okay. Well, here's the round. It's not out of head space. We got a good primer strike. No bulges at the base. And I'll tell you what, this is not the highest quality stuff in the world, but if it had processed this, it had processed just about anything.